good policies time. Good morning, Mike. How you doing? The, the fair starts this weekend. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love fairs, but man, that means summer's over. Yeah, uh, close to it. Kids, yeah. kids are going. All right, I miss my friends. I'm going back to school. Yeah. yeah. No, it was never. That was never sure a thought they. in my mind, buddy. <laughs> never a thought. Oh, I can't wait to go see everybody. No, no, I, I didn't. That was not part of it. Yeah. So, well, so. no, and kids are connected with their phones, anyways. Yeah. So. Different subject. Uh, the roof. Policies. Good for you. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Finally. Yes. Finally. The roof. The roof. The roof is getting replaced. Finally. So if you hear some hammering and banging, it's not me and Mike going at it. Okay. Okay, no, so, no, it's definitely. I like definitely. our subject this morning. I've never been a homeowner, although I absolutely love to. I buy the property where I am right now, even though it's an old trailer. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but I've never it's owned home. it. It is exactly that. It is home. Both Don and I love it. It's an amazing place to live. Uh, but when you sell your home, there's some things that you need to remember to do, huh? Yeah, well, the, when you buy and sell, and, and I thought this would be a great conversation to have this morning because I get it a lot. Uh, so if you are, are a homeowner and you're selling your home, uh, I get a lot of folks who don't cancel uh, their, their policy once the home has sold. And it's it, it's an easy mistake to make to just assume that, okay, well, because you, know, you figure there is more paperwork here than a forest can supply, right? So you're <laughs> assuming that through that process, there's got to be something that's going to notify my current company that I'm done. I sold the house, but well, that's not the case. No, like I said, I've never owned a home to do this, but one would assume if, if there's a lien on the property, obviously, that somebody would notify somebody, but I guess that's not the case. Right. So once sometimes that's our trigger is that we will, you know, the home gets sold, the lien gets uh, notified, the mortgagee will then send us a letter saying that this mortgage has been satisfied, and we go, congratulations to them. Bought, paid their house off in five years. That's they awesome. Hit you know? the lottery. You know? Um, so that will oftentimes trigger a call, and that's a lot of times when we find out, oh, no, I, I sold that. Uh, so remember, an insurance is a contract between you and the insurance carrier. So I, why I thought this was a good topic is because there's so many ways we can sidestep this and throw quick reminders out there. It's up to you to make changes to initiate coverage, to make changes, or to cancel a policy. So when you sell a home, make sure you cancel your policy. When you buy a home, don't make it the last part of the process. Because when you're going to buy a home, you're you're, you're spending a lot of time looking to find the property that's right for you. You've taken a lot of time to figure out what you like about properties. Do you want land? Do you want a garage? Do you want a porch? How many bathrooms do you want? You know, Do you want a house with uh, propane heat or oil heater, wood heat? Make insurance part of that too. You know, when you start really narrowing down and you're zeroing in a property, start the process of getting insurance quoting. Don't get caught off guard because banks are pretty good at telling you that you need it, but sometimes it comes pretty late. So then you're under the gun and you don't know what your insurance ramifications are going to be through this whole process where you've already gotten approved for the loan and so on and so forth. So insurance really has to be front and center for those situations. But the same thing when you're going to trade a car. Just in the past two weeks, I've had multiple clients say to me, hey, I traded a car to the dealer should tell you. <laughs> no. Well, we've had that conversation where yeah. they said, yeah, your insurance is covered too. So. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. No, the, the dealers, it's not, it's not up to the dealership to tell us that you're trading vehicles. It is up to you as the contract holder with the insurance company to notify us of trading or purchasing or acquiring a vehicle. Uh, yes, it's common that a dealership will say to you, Look, I'm going to reach out to your insurance company. Why is that? Well, because most times when you're buying a car, you're either buying it with a loan or leasing it with a lost payee additional insured who's going to be a leasing company. And they're going to want to very much know that you have insurance to satisfy the requirements of the agreement that you're signing at the dealership. So, yes, they're going to call us and ask us to provide proof of insurance. And sometimes we go, well, you don't know. You know, they got a new car. We didn't know that. And then we have to reach out to the client and say, hey, we heard you got a new car, but, you know, we're not going to be able to make changes based on information we're receiving from a third party. Please tell us, you know, that you what, what you got. Now let's talk about the coverage because maybe you had a 10, 15, 20-year-old car and you've been saving and saving and saving and now you want to buy a brand new car. Well, you might have had a liability only and now we're going to have physical damage coverage of comprehensive collision and some of the other enhancements available. What deductibles are right for you? What enhancements are right for you? Do you want to buy gap insurance through the dealership or do you want to buy gap insurance as a uh, an add-on to your auto policy? So many things to talk about. So that's why I thought... You know, just going to the cancellation thing was a great example of, of, of uh, to get this thing going. And one other thought this morning, believe it or not, I have another one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> canceling insurance anytime. Nothing said. Nothing said. Thank you. The laugh said it all. Uh, but if you're cancel, if you're leaving an insurance company, all right. So, uh, so maybe you've decided that you're not going to have a car anymore, and you, and you just get rid of the car. 
don't you know? Don't let the insurance policy lapse for non-payment. That's not the right way to do it. You could be leaving money on the table. Well, that too, and I would understand uh, it would affect your credit score because it would it would show that you had been canceled instead of canceling it yourself. So believe it or not, that would not re- show okay. on a report. Okay. Uh, so there's no central database that says you had uh, cancellations that were not chosen by you or, or because of non-payment. What can happen is that if, 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 if it's the opposite of you leaving money on the table, if you just let it go and then you see all these invoices coming and you're just ignoring them, Maybe you still owed some money. Maybe the way your payment plan worked with that particular carrier, and this could apply to home auto, whatever the case may be, they could go to a uh, you know a third party and then start coming after you. And that would impact your credit when collections start calling. Or maybe on the other hand, and, and, and I've seen this happen, uh, you could have canceled and you had paid for the year or you... Paid, paid ahead. Paid for the year yeah. instead of like, I have to make payment after payment <laughs> after payment. I know most of the world does that. Um, but then all of a sudden you find out somewhere, uh, we just read the news the other day, they're lost money. You know, uh, the insurance company has, has notified the state of Vermont that you have this much money. Yeah. And then they, and you don't know How do know we get it to you? Yeah. How do we get it to you? Yeah. So again, you could be leaving money on the table. So anytime a chain, uh, <laughs> a, a, you know, you need to start something, change something, or cancel something, make sure you spend properly request it. Don't ever let insurance cancel just by not paying it. It's not the right way to do it. Uh, you know, be your own advocate. Again, you know, insurance is not, I'm going to throw out all my cliches this morning. You know, be your own advocate. Don't set it and forget it. You know, I mean, there's, there, this is a, this is a, a constantly evolving thing that goes with you. It's portable, but you have to be a part of it. You have to be the manager. That's right. Okay, so tell folks how to get in touch with you. Sure. Give us a call, 748-5224. Visit our website, thebarrettagency.com, or on Google, Facebook, and YouTube, Barrett Insurance Agency. And here, Thursday mornings. Thursday? Is it Thursday? Somewhere. Tuesday. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So we're going on through Thursday the morning. already. I mean, where's the time going? Let it's me go good on. policies. And yes, it's fair season. Music coming up from Bruno Mars. First, Sam Smith.